Hello, hello everyone. This is Benny Rodriguez with your next entry in the Vast Books series. Today, ladies and gentlemen, today I have for you, as a part of our Vast Books series, to all of you in our Infinite Insights Nation, the book, Fast Food Nation. Yes, Fast Food Nation. Now, this book was a revolutionary book when it came out. Why? Because it exposed everything about the fast food industry. But you know what I found is really interesting. You know, even though the author Eric Schlosser says here, it's the dark side of the all American meal, is that uh, this kind of discusses more than the dark side, it discusses the good side. It discusses the good, the bad, the ugly, the ratchet, the raunchy, the slimy, the gooey, uh, yet also the very inspiring part of uh, of this alarming, alarming industry that is the fast food nation, which is still prevalent today. So I'm going to share with you uh, some quick takeaways from the book overall, and uh, hopefully this serves of some value to you. So first of all, uh, I remember that the book starts from the point of view in Colorado Springs and there was a uh, there was a mine that was dug out where uh, un underneath that mine uh, within this hill was this entire industry uh, that was producing the those producing the food for the fast for a fast food company now why is that significant because actually I'll show you guys the picture but in this hill, this seemingly serene hill, right? It looks beautiful. It looks like it's just natural and everything. Is this fast food company, right? And um, you know what was interesting about that was that here's how the fast food nation, how the fast food industry really started. It was a way to make mass production during a time of war it was during a time of strife and stress uh, anxiety on the part of many of the citizens of the nation right and many of the top leaders of this country who had decided to find easier more convenient ways to mass produce food for their soldiers for their warriors right before going into battle so in the midst of training they started to create these systems that were easy that were leveraging these companies that already had a great system right such as mcdonald's kfc burger king pizza hut right they already had a system that can get pizza or burger or french fries or something that was already handmade something that could easily be stored right something that could easily be transferred and heated up quickly so that in times of war, in times of panic, then people would, the people who were serving for the war would have a quick way to eat, right? And it wouldn't take too much time, right? Imagine you're in the middle of a war and all of a sudden you're boiling potatoes and it takes like an hour for those potatoes to boil. Anything can happen, a freaking bomb could just like blow up in your face. So the fast food industry was created in a, as a result of that sort of mindset, that sort of mentality, people going in, right? But what I found is is even more interesting is that once this started to happen, those industries got so much power, and they got so much uh, so much leverage from the government officials that they started to abuse it, right? Then there's this there's this greed, right? There's this this angst and this uh, this ability in which there was a corruption that started to happen. See guys, that's where things went downhill because now what starts to happen? The fast food industry is gaining so much power, they gain so much uh, yeah, power in the sense that they started to do whatever the hell they want. They had so much freedom, they actually had political affiliates people who went into legislation right to pass laws like the mcdonald's uh law in which they had 
power. They, they could reduce the minimum wage and they could hire people who were underage. They could do all of these things that weren't normally acceptable as a part of law. And now they could tweak it and manipulate these things for their own advantage. Resultantly, these uh, industries became mega empires because now they were supported by the government, right? So just so much greed, so much, uh, so much corruption that's going on in throughout the way. What ends up happening is that growth just continues to happen, continues to happen, right? McDonald's, Burger King, Pizza Hut, they just have so much authority, right? They, which results in so much expansion, right? Because now it's easy for them to grow. Now they could hire whoever the hell they want. They could impose any type of laws that they want. They had the support. In fact, they even funded some of the presidential political campaigns. Imagine how ridiculous that is, right? But how many companies do that today? All types of companies do that today, right? But this was, this was an innovative moment when, those, when the fast food industries started to do that. It was really the first of its kind. And that's what was really uh, haunting about these industries because they really, uh, it was a dangerous situation in which they could do whatever it is that they wanted. Now, what ends up happening is that there was a flip side to this. There was a positive side because if you look at the economic advantage, millions and millions of people were being hired, right? Also, the thanks to the fast food industry, they were creating, and the franchise industry, they were creating the largest movement of new millionaires, right? So all of these millionaires, people creating wealth, was a result of these fast food industries, people who were starting their own franchises, right? Today, a franchise for McDonald's and Burger King is about $1.5 million to start. And people are still having successful businesses, right? Not all of them, a lot of people failed along the way, right? But what ended up being created was an immense amount of wealth. So what do you think was the end result of that? Well, the fast food industry became even more powerful, right? It became even more powerful because there was the economic advantage, right? How many people they were helping, but were they helping everyone? No, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, a lot of people started getting sick. A lot of people started getting ill. Right. We had children who were working in these in, in the factories, children who were working at the stores, people who were working way below minimum wage. We're talking a seven to seven dollars minimum wage in some cases. Some people working one dollar eighty six cents minimum wage. In fact, so imagine. Right. Imagine the, the social, the socioeconomic, sociopolitical uh, problems that have arisen from that, not to mention right on a health standpoint what was going on see this is a beautiful plan this would have worked out amazingly if this was vegetables right vegetables and like healthy foods healthy eats imagine what this could have created for our generation if this was all created on that principle but guess what fast isn't always fast doesn't necessarily create healthy and that was the entire psychological imbalance or shift was that something had to give. And what gave? Health, right? Eventually, uh, E. coli was starting to happen. They found on, on one hamburger, they, a frozen hamburger, they found out that, the, that the, um, there was a strain of E. coli, I think it was H... Uh, H 2047, I think was the exact strain of E. coli that was found in these burgers, that by the time that the government seized those burgers that was making people ill and unhealthy, a hundred, a hundred and fifty of them they were able to seize, 350 million were already distributed worldwide because it's fast, 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 fast. How do you catch up to 350 million burgers that are already infected? insane isn't it right they were able to salvage 150 million of them and quarantine them but one burger for every person in the entire nation at the time was already in distribution 
So people started getting sick, people started getting ill. That's when the government, that's when other people started to put a lot of tight bands on uh, on the these fast food industries, right? Obesity rates started increasing, right? People's behaviors, pe right? When the Happy Meal came out, the psychological, the psychological impact that had Happy Meals, right? People started, uh, kids wanting to go to McDonald's every day, every day. Why? Because now they could get a new toy, right? They could go to the playground and their family, the, the parents felt incompetent if they didn't take their kids because they can't make their kids happy. So these industries, the amount that they invest in research to get to make this a generational thing, right? meant that people are now gonna go to the restaurants at all times. Now, wouldn't any business owner want that? Of course. The problem is that these business owners were providing food that wasn't having a healthy impact on their children, a healthy lifestyle, right? So what ends up happening is the family becomes ill health, the children become ill health, and that passes generation after generation. Frightening stuff, guys, frightening stuff. Uh, I won't give you all of the juicy details, but I highly recommend, highly suggest that you get, get this New York Times best-selling book and that you look into further the fast food nation, right? You'll learn a lot of the origins of how this all started, right? And guys, it's very powerful. I know you want to watch the documentary. Most of you want to just watch the movie, but I'll be honest with you. A lot of that is just glitz and glamour. Read the freaking book. The book will give you the real truth, the real answers. All right, so Fast Food Nation, Eric Slosher. This is, again, your ultimate reviewer. This is Vinny Rodriguez, also known as Eight Figure Vision. I'm here as a part of our Infinite Insights group, here to give you the next entry in our Vast Series book review. I will check you guys out tomorrow, same place. And when you view this video, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, guys, peace and prosperity. Talk to you soon.